Summer split in today's Ready Check. We'll learn more about the new Aatrox from one of the lead designers of the rework. That's coming up in just a bit. And first, let us introduce ourselves once again. If you've never seen us, I'm Efi Shogzaporter, kicking off the day with Martin the Fish Schoelunge and Aaron Medic Chamberlain. You're out after that. I'm like the English football team. Yeah, yeah you're I definitely out. You can't ball. hit a ball, that's for sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, talking about kicking off, we are currently in a uh, World Cup third place game where Belgium, at last time I checked, was ahead. So, oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's fine. It's yeah. fine. It doesn't matter. It's third, no. fourth place. doesn't matter at all. It doesn't not matter. just stop crying, by the way. Before we went live, he was already breaking down. <laughs> Keep it in mind. And you know why? Because that is not important right now. What is important right now is who is the best team in Europe. And since yesterday, we definitively have an answer to that. It is Misfits. Misfits Gaming took on G2 Esports. They were both undefeated at 6 and 0. And after a hard-fought battle where G2 brought a lot to the table, Misfits took it off and uh, is now definitively number one. Oh, definitely. I don't think anyone can deny Misfits are number one. They look so strong. Maxlaw looks incredible in the jungle. Mickey's roaming incredibly well as well. Every single player on that team looks like they're at the top of their game. And I like that we're showing this fight here because that was actually the deciding one. Yep. After this, or uh, before this, G2 had pressured, you know, used this like siege poke comp, and it was like, okay, this game could actually go in favor of G2. But then we get great team fighting from Misfits. And that's the biggest thing for me. It's exactly in the late game they beat them. It's not the early snowball. It's not the issues of Springsford where they couldn't win a game past 25 minutes. This is a team who can now play multiple parts of the game, and that's why they're number one. And it's lovely to see, especially after the failure that was the Springsford for Misfits Gaming. They didn't even make it to playoffs, and they were determined not to let that happen again that much that they have now equaled their longest winning streak yeah. in the organization's history. And if they win today, they beat that record from Spring 2017. And zero roster changes. Yeah. A a lot of organizations, if they're like, we have to make it back to Worlds, they will panic after a spring split where you do not even make top six, kept the five starting players, added more coaching staff. Jess especially as a member, they always mention as being very important for the team. So you have actually a massive effort from multiple people. And that's why, again, this organization and this team are now consistently winning games. They are super aligned as a team and winning. After the match, there was a picture from Perks and Maxlor uh, to show that they are still friends. I think we're going to take a look at that. But for G2, yes, they lost that game yesterday. But I think they can be proud of, of what they showed. They drafted themselves a difficult composition. They wanted to see how far they could go. Not that far, apparently. Yeah, if you're G2, you're not worried about this at all. You've just come back from Rift Rivals, where you performed relatively well, only losing one game. Probably a little bit of jet lag in there, probably not as much scrim time as you'd like. Coming into the second half of the split, they'll be golden. They're at least getting second place. Of course, and... Oh, at least Ooh, second at place. Least that, I just realized place. that was a statement right there. Uh, I just think for G2, they're happy that there are really good teams in Europe. Because if you want to go to Worlds and if you want to actually get out of groups, potentially challenge someone in a quarterfinal, you need good practice all the way. And in Europe, we are very top heavy at the moment with Fnatic, with, of course, Vitality and G2 and Misfits. It's only good if these guys can beat each other and just make everyone else better. Yeah, I love it for now. The fact that they are not one team that is head and shoulders above anyone else, even though Misfits is well, coming maybe close. Maybe they are. Maybe they are. We will see. Do they think they do you think they can get that undefeated run 18 and 0? I'm going to say yes. I'll put it out now. 18-0, Misfits win. I think they only lose two games in playoffs as well. Wow. Ooh, so they win the whole thing or what? They win the whole thing. They win the whole thing. You're yeah. making that claim I'm, right I'm now. I'm making the claim right now. Week four. Week four. I don't care. He just said I know Misfits it, will win the whole it. thing. Yeah. I think Misfits will end 16-2. and two. Okay. That's my prediction. And one of the games they lose is to a bottom team. There we go. Random That's int. Rocket. <laughs> no, they're not a bottom team. They're Rocket's actually a, a playoff team. In any case, we talked about the individuals and in Misfits. They have all found their form. They're all stepping up. And one of the guys we want to look at is Mickey X. He was everywhere on his Rakan. And uh, we have a resident Diamond 3, Rakan 1 3. It's not a <laughs> You back up. It's you back up. Sir. Platinum. Platinum Medic. scub. So yeah. break down how exactly did Mickey do? I'm going to talk us through the shocks because Mickey played incredibly well. Thank you. 
Thank you, I do. Mickey played incredibly well on Rakan yesterday. And what I want to highlight, firstly, is his vision control, and secondly, is his ability to make plays. Now, it's very important to remember that Mickey has run teleport in every single one of his games thus far, and that allows him to have so much more presence on the map. Let's have a look at this first play. We're going to have a look down towards the bottom lane. We're relatively early on in the game. And what you'll see is if we have a quick look at the mini-map here, Mickey and Han Summer have continuously pushed in this bottom lane, which now allows Mickey to roam around the map. What we'll see is he'll come up here into the enemy side jungle, into the G2 jungle, and place a deep ward alongside Maxlaw, which gives them vision control of that bottom side. So let's have a quick look as he comes up here. He'll place a great ward around that blue buff. Maxlaw will come up and place a ward near him as well. And what this does for Misfits is it allows them to know exactly where Yankos is going to be. So you can see one ward is placed there, and then the second ward is placed just over here. This means that they always know where Yankos is on the map, or at least the zone that he's going to be in. Because if he's on the bottom side, they have vision control. And if he's not there, they know he's going to be on the top side of the map. What this leads to for Misfits is Mickey's ability to get into this mid lane fight. You can see Maxor comes in for a gank. Senkuk sets it up on perks. It doesn't matter that Yankos is here because Mickey is able to TP in on this superb ward in the lane. And then Yankos is caught in a 3v2 situation. And because Mickey is here, they're able to get the flash out of Yankos and able to get first blood as well. Really good map play from Misfits all round, controlling vision down towards that bottom side and then roaming up. Let's have a look at this second can play because once again it's all about vision control what's happening at this point is that g2 Wadid and Hyanan are pushing in this top lane. They've already got one tower and they're looking for another. Perks is backing off and you can see Misfits react and say, oh, we can go towards mid and get one tower. However, what they're also doing is setting up for the dragon that's coming up in a very short period of time. They know Yankos is going to want to try and get vision around this side of his jungle. So they have a ward here and then this next ward from Mickey is absolutely crucial. He places it here. You might wonder why he puts it there instead of down here where you usually place a ward just over the wall. That's because if Yankos places a pink ward here, which he will do in just a second, it doesn't spot ward number two. It only spots ward number three. So let's have a look at exactly why that's important. Yankos now walks into the river, trying to get vision control around that uh, Cloud Drake that's about to spawn. He pushes forward past the halfway mark, and now they know they can engage. They know exactly where all G2 are, and so they bring the teleport in onto that first ward we mentioned, and you can see Mickey knows he can get a perfect engage across all members of G2 here. Fortunately for Hyanan, we did gobbles him up before the engage comes out. So it means Misfits don't get as much out of the kill as they would have wanted, but they're still able to take down Yankos at the end of the fight. And that leads to them getting that second Drake and getting control of the jungle. The final clip we're going to have a look at is the game defining clip here. Now, Misfits have started up the Elder Dragon. They're miles ahead at this point, and G2 realize they have to react somehow. Mickey cancels his teleport in towards the mid lane, and then look at where, what he does. He says, I know what I can do. I can get a flank off here. They're going to go for the Baron. If I come in behind them, I don't need my flash to engage. All I need is my Alt-W combo. They force G2 into this awful situation where they're all funneled in the river, and it doesn't matter how much vision you control you have on Mickey here. They see him coming. All he has to do is get in from the back and manage to land a two or three-man charm here. Misfits are ready for it. Mickey jumps in, lands the three-man charm, gets the knockup. Senkus can engage, and from this fight, Misfits are able to take the game. And Mickey's play for this game was absolutely paramount to Misfits taking the win. And it's just part of a machine that Misfits have set up. Let's have a look at exactly what uh, Mickey did in that game. You can see, involved in a huge amount of kills, had a very high damage percentage on that Rakan as well. But he was healing his team and helping them, facilitating them when they needed that vision control. Great stuff from Mickey. And it's the reason that Misfits were able to take the win in the end. And the reason they're undefeated at the top of the table. Wonderful breakdown. Uh, as a cool aside, the Rakan did do more damage than mid lane Yasuo. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that wasn't really Sankuk's fault, I don't think. He, in that, he, was, in that pushing waves. he was pushing <laughs> waves. Mickey did everything perfect when it comes to engaging fights. And that's kind of the thing. He's mechanically so gifted. So when he's on playmaking supports and the rest of the team can kind of set up the map with him, he can make these plays. And we don't know how he's improving on that front, but he did say in an earlier interview that he's working on his communication that in years past, he was always a bit too quiet and he didn't really make the initiative. 
Perhaps we'll have to ask him and get an update if that's improving right now. It does look like it. Could very well be. It looks like it. He also tweeted that he was sweating after the games and he screamed so much he lost his voice. Yeah. Because he's basically making the big calls to start the fights. Fantastic. Mickey was all over the place, but there's one thing that we are wondering since we are almost through with week four. We are still looking for the answer to an unsolved mystery. Where is Reckless? Where is he? Where is our two-time AD carry MVP? Where is Martin Reckless Larson? We have not seen him. We saw him last over in North America. He was having some shrimp or whatever with double lift. And you know what? We just don't want to think about the fact that he stayed over there. We don't think so. But we want to see him in the studio. You can recognize him. He has a luscious blonde head of hair, uh, Swedish style, and a tattoo uh, of which you can recognize him. So if you see him around the studio, if you see him, please hashtag ReadyCheck. Tweet at LOL Esports because we miss him. We do miss him. And he is most likely the only member with a reckless tattoo on his arm. Most I don't likely. think a lot of other people have that. But yeah, we definitely miss him. I think Fnatic on their side, they have to soon decide if they actually want to continue playing without him because right now they are not sitting at the number one spot. Yeah, if we take a look at the standings, all jokes aside, they have played now with Weepa and Soaz a, a lot of games. We do know that Reckless has been training on a bunch of different champions. He's ready to make that change. He's probably gearing up for that possibility. So he's not stuck in the mindset anymore of only ADs. And something we talk about in, in psychology is the idea of the change cycle. What, what happens is when you have a, a new change in your life, it takes you a while to adapt to that change. And to speed that up, you have to explore the new opportunities and the new chances you have in life. So for Reckless here, for a while he was like, I'm only going to play AD carries, I'm just going to play safe, defensive, what I'm used to. Now he's starting to explore things like the Morgana, the Swain in his solo queue. That's when I'll start to see Fnatic actually adapt and be able to use Reckless again. He needed that time to make the adaptation. Mm -hmm. Because when we look at the standings, it just uh, disappeared. It was four and three. Rocket is also four and three. Yep. And they play each other today. Just yesterday, Fnatic lost to Splice. And it's just that when we talk about the standings, we talk about Schalke in the context of, ooh, will they make playoffs? But we don't make those second thoughts when it's only Fnatic that's at four and three. I think that's a bit of bias because they just won the split and they have the sure. talent. But it is a question that needs to be answered. It is, but we have so much trust in the players, in the organization, that of course they will make playoffs. For me to the question is just, will Fnatic settle for maybe just being top four? Yeah. Like, shouldn't the goal be we need to be number one again? We just won the last bit. We 3 0 in the final. And that's kind of thing. Without Reckless, 80 carries or not, they will not reach the same highs that they had last split. And that's, of course, what they should be aiming for because they need to win another so one. So you don't think if the meta stays the same that Buipo and Soaz on these other champions are good enough for Fnatic to beat G2 and Misfits consistently? Not consistently, no. I think going into a best of five with the current lineups, I actually would put my money on G2 and Misfits to win the split. There we go. Medic? That's pretty brave. I think in a best of five, when you can sub Reckless in mid, uh, mid best of five, I think actually Fnatic still have a chance because you can just switch to an AD but carry We don't meta. know what he's going to play. It, well, that's true. That's true. But then you're just hypothesizing about anything. And I could say we don't know if they're going to get You just called Misfits will win well. the entire split, mate. I, I, I think, Two minutes ago. I think Fnatic could beat G2 and Misfits, but I don't think they'll beat Misfits in the end. Mm -hmm. I said it's all hypothesis, and your analyst, that's actually what you do. That's your entire job. I just, I'm, a, yes. I'm a play by podcast, so I don't know Someone what Someone gives yeah. me a script, and I just read what's on it. Yeah, and just to be clear, we're enjoying Fanatic's play very much yeah. with people yeah, and with so much. But uh, a lot of fans in the studio, when we go and take pictures, they don't ask how we are. The first thing they ask is, <laughs> is Reckless around? <laughs> Where is he? So there we go. He's not here. He's not here. But, uh, well, we'll see. And while Reckless, he hasn't been around, someone who has been around is Aatrox in the top lane during Rift Rivals, absolutely smacking North America around. And Ender, he caught up with the lead designer of the rework, Riot Jack. Take a look. Yeah. Mo moving on with that ultimate idea, I know there was another iteration that came a little bit closer uh, to the one that actually ended up hitting live, where he could make that bargain with the devil. Uh, and it was sort of tied into the old Q on Aatrox. Aatrox was called Dark Flight, and you could actually have an ally that would become much stronger and end up reviving. Uh, you want to talk to me about a little bit about that? Yeah, that was cool. That was the sort of like uh, Blood Brothers type thing, or one, and one teammate um, would accept Aatrox is sort of deal with the devil and become a darken for a little while and what this meant at the time it was still a revive spell um, but it was also a spell that burned you to death at the same time uh, like the longer you were you were in the ultimate the more damage you took and you could stave off taking damage by dealing damage so like as long as you were fighting you were surviving it was like live, it was a live to die type of spell Speaking of Rift Rivals and just pro play in general, how, how confident or how sure were you that he actually was going to see uh, some amount of play? 
Um, I, I wasn't sure. I mean, on, on the one hand, uh, the Q spell is very telegraphed, and it, it, you could see why people thought it'd be hard to hit the spell, especially for really professional caliber players who are, you know, dodging around in and out of it. Um, on the other hand, and I think you're seeing this steadily, uh, his R spell is exceptionally good with coordinated jungle play, right? Um, yeah. That is some of the most powerful ways to threaten any squishy top laner, any, you know, with the tower dive with his ultimate. And we knew that would be powerful. And then on top of that, you know, when we were developing him before, you know, it was before 8.11 where we were developing him. And so it had been a pretty stable meta for a long time in top lane, a big tanky boys that had big shields or big health regen to survive top lane, right? Scion, or in Maokai. And so we're like, well, this guy has got resourceless sustain and, and can reduce their healing and shielding. So he'll be good into that meta for sure. Um, so we had a we had an idea, you know. We, he he came out even stronger than I think anyone anticipated, but we had we had a thought. Well, there we go. Definitely very powerful. By the way, you can watch this full interview online on youtubecom esports. Always nice to hear about what is theorized about and how you think the impact will be, and then seeing it used by a pro player and absolutely crushing. It's true. I mean, there's some good points about how you can dodge around the different uh, Q abilities. It is just. A lot harder to do than it than you think, yeah. and also the idea around like this guy's gonna be good against tanks because he's good against shields specifically. Well, right now he's also good against carries yeah. because he can just one v one anyone. So you can watch the entire interview, but you cannot watch Aatrox because he's perm banned, and that's gonna stay <laughs> he that is way. Perm banned, and also uh, it's like a perfect storm because the Aatrox rework, but then top lane was already in a complete different state than it had been for you mm -hmm. know the couple of years before. So everything's a bit crazy right now. But that's the way the meta works. Yeah. You know, we talked about adaptation. You're gonna have to learn how to play against Aatrox if you're a top top laner. So I'm looking forward to you see. Ban it. Yeah, you ban <laughs> it. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to see what counter picks we have because I know at some point it will be let through, it'll get first picked, and then the enemy team will have a counter pick aligned for it. They will lose. Maybe we'll see today. Who knows? Uh, we also want to zoom in on some particular players since we are approaching the halfway point of the split. Since we are gearing up for the playoff race and look at studs and duds, guys, explain to me who has impressed you and who hasn't so far. Uh, let me talk about Memento first because he's been doing amazing on. Rocket. He's a one-man army for that team. He was also the first one on our list yes. of was studs. Was the easiest pick ever. Because right now he's... That's only because we can put me on the list of studs. Yeah, right, right, right. We wanted Medic on, they said no, so we took Memento <laughs> instead. Basically the same height yeah. as well. You know, you guys look the same. But Memento is the most important player, I think, for Rocket. I also think he's actually one of the most important players in the entire league at the moment, because everything they do is around him. Uh, he needs to win early game fights. He needs to be a carry despite being a jungler. It's not about setting up the lanes. It's just set up Memento to do well. Yeah, if you need a spark to ignite the fires for the team, to ignite any composition they have, it's always Memento. You're looking at him to get that first kill, to get the first tower, to get the first objective every single time. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to look at the next person. It's also a jungler. I think for H2K, though, it's probably difficult. You don't want to put the blame on one person since they just seem to not be very proactive overall. But a lot of times that does trace back to Shook because we know that he can do it. We know that he likes to do it. So you wonder why it doesn't come out in this point in time. I was one of the first advocates of the Shook effect when he came in last split when H2K sort of revolutionized their playstyle, And now it just feels very much like he's floundering again. The whole team is floundering. No one's stepping up. No one's standing up and being counted on that team. It almost feels like they've, they've already given up on yep. the split and I want to see them actually push themselves a little bit more and maybe even go outside the standard compositions they're playing. He's the one who needs to gamble, basically, if he wants to get these laners ahead, because they will not do it on their own. And sadly, as a jungler, if your team is losing, typically you look a lot worse than the other jungler because you don't get any help. You know, you know suddenly your laner is behind against the enemy one, and then you can't take the fights you normally can. But if there's anyone on this team who can try and get them to start winning games, it needs to be Shook. He's also the veteran. Go to the mid lane. I mean, anything. He, yeah, anything. anything. Is, Shook needs to do just something to try and get these people going. Mm -hmm. um, if I look at the whole list, we have three junglers and we have a mid laner and an AD carry. Now, upset, I do want to know your reasoning for that because if we're blaming or we're tracing a lot back to the jungler specifically, why has upset then disappointed you? Well, he was supposed to be the new up and coming rookie AD carry that could challenge for the number one spot in Europe when he came in last split. That was not the case. Too many individual mistakes. This split, we don't even see him in the games. Uh, very passive bottom lane from Schalke. The meta is an issue for him 100%. He's not adapted that well compared to some of the other guys. And right now, Schalke have realized they can't play around the bot lane. Where they have this guy they actually built the team around in the first place, they have to go through Nuke Duck or maybe a Visichachi. And that's why he's on this list as a dot, because you need a lot more when you build a team around a player.
The thing is, he's the franchise player for Schalke, and you compare him to another franchise player like Perks, who we have as a stud, Perks stands up. Like, he's counted on that team. Whenever you need someone to rely on, you know Perks is going to step up in a game, especially in big games when he is the sole carry. Upset had a couple of moments of brilliance last split. There were a couple of times I was like, yeah, this guy's going to be good. The Tristana triple kill where he was leaping all over the place, I remember vividly in my mind. But now, actually recalling anything that he's done, as you say, is it's just a fog. You can't really say a moment that he has been the key carry for his mm -hmm. team. And hopefully seeing how yesterday we saw that strategy all built around Yukdok and they, they finished it off. They won that game mm -hmm. for Schalke. Maybe this summer round, put this guy in a position to carry because I think one moment when he has a good game, hopefully they can take that confidence and they can run with it. But as said, we haven't seen it yet. He's also still waiting for the 80 carries to get buffed mm -hmm. a little bit more, I feel like, because he is the kind of guy who wants to play slow early game and then be a team fighter. That is hard to do. Games are 30 minutes long. Yeah. You're forced to play bruisers or mages, and it doesn't suit him. And this is why the teams that play early game and play correctly and play, play aggressively, rather, are picking up the wins. Yeah. And that's why our last stud is Maxlor. Yesterday, it was all about Mickey X, but Maxlor has just been a consistent catalyst for Misfits Gaming. If you want to pick the best jungler in the league at the moment, I think you have to pick Max Law. He's so consistent in the early game. He sets his team up for success every single time. I think he's got like an 80 to 90% first blood participation. He's always there. He's always willing to sacrifice himself for the team as well. And overall, best jungler for me. There we go. Uh, I think Memento could come close. We'll see if he manages to beat Fnatic today. Maybe he's up there. Let's take a look at the schedule. Way, the jungle pool is packed. And I know Memento uh, made a tier list. Or, um, he did make a tier list. We actually put Jankos uh, as his number, number one jungle one. in Europe. So not even Max Law yeah. up there. There's a lot of guys fighting for it, obviously, also with the schedule. I'm specifically looking at Schalke Spice. I tweeted about it as well. Like. This game, to me, when it comes to like the playoff race that's starting now that we're getting closer to the halfway point, if Schalke beats Spice and they're 2-0 this week, you can actually start getting hyped. You can actually start believing that this team will now move towards the top of the standings, even though there's been so many issues in the past. But you can also say the same for Spice. 0-4 start, potentially a four-game win streak in the Four and a half. Years. They also beat Team Four and a half, yeah. Liquid is only a half here. <laughs> but I, I think for Spice, if they can also take down Schalke and play the same style as yesterday, Something done early game powerhouse. Where did that come from? Well, for me, I'm looking, yes, at that game. It's a good game to fish. It is a great, great game. game. You know, Splice, Shauku is good, but Fnatic, Rockout's the game for me. After seeing Fnatic lose yesterday, Rockout looking good. They've got momentum in the jungle. I'm actually thinking that Rockout are going to take that one, and we'll see in my predictions. Well, let's take a look at those predictions and see if anything else pops out. Uh, I don't remember voting for Vitality, but I stand by my point because they were great yesterday and uh, they might beat Misfits. There we go. They're going to break yeah. their winning streak. Mm. Sure. Sure shocks. I love it. So, Medic, you are the only one. Yeah, I'm also in last place on that board as well. So I think maybe yeah, you are. my predictions isn't no, that I good. I love it. So, yeah, I'm also doing pretty bad, but you need to take risks if you want to go up sure. in, the, in the standings of the predictions predictions and honestly I do think Vitality has a chance. Let's talk about oh, yeah. that marquee matchup because they're on a roll. The meta fits them like a glove. And I think that the fact that in the bottom lane, Attila is really adept at the Heimerdingers of this world and the crazy champions together with the roaming of Jack Troll. I don't know. They could give Misfits a run for their money in that match. I think it's going to be a very competitive game where it might end up in some very big team fights. Let's go into the side, the whole thing. But In the mid lane. <laughs> uh, probably in the mid lane for Vitality at least. Uh, I just think with... Uh, Misfits and the way they draft, they know already about all these different bot lane picks that people use to try and beat the AD carries. Do they, though? Uh, maybe there's some surprises, but they typically seem to know. They ban away Heimerdinger if it's something the other team can play. They get rid of Swain, Vladimir, these kind of champions. So there's a safe lane for Hansama, and then he wins that lane with Mickey. They will try and do the same. If Vitality can surprise them. See, I think the problem is, I, I agree with you that Misfits will have done their research, but I don't think you can focus the bans on Attila. I think you have to focus the bans on Jack Troll, and then that opens up Attila's mm. champion pool. You're looking at Rakan, uh, t even Tom Kench is very good for him, Pike as well, Morgana. There's so many support bans in that first phase. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Attila bring something like the Lux out again and actually be able to harass Hansam and Mickey in lane. And there is a huge X factor. That is Max Lore and Gilius, the banter left, right, and center. Yep. Now, Misfits is 2 0 over Vitality in spring. And if you cast your mind back to those games, it was a smite clown fiesta where Gilius got the short <laughs> end of the stick multiple times. So this guy, he's in his head, man. Max Lore is in his head, even with the top knot. Maybe that's for protection Maybe. now. Maybe. There's definitely a lot of uh, a lot of trash talk between them. I think both of the junglers they agreed, you know, no funnel comps, just be able to actually go toe to toe against each other. I think we get early action. Mm -hmm. Hopefully for Gilius, it doesn't end in a smite 
war. It now, is hopefully that, it does, and he rises above. Okay, that would also be cool if he actually did The redemption the arc for Gilead. Yes. I think he just wants to beat him in the early game and snowball the, the game for his team. Uh, and you guys will be able to watch that from Attila's point of view. The POV stream for the bot laner will go up uh, during the same time as that marquee matchup of the week starts. So that is all the way at the end of the day, but we are counting down towards our first game of the day, the Unicorns of Love versus H2K. Now, these are two teams that pulled off great winning streaks and resurgences yep. at the end of the spring split. Unfortunately, right now, that's not <laughs> looking as likely, I would say. H2K <laughs> is really down in the dumpster and, and hasn't even been able to win a single game. Now, yesterday, the organization did come out and sent out a tweet to their fans and to the community to kind of shed a light on what's been going on. And they said, hey, there is no excuse. We aren't adapting to the meta, and that's just not good enough. You either adapt or you lose. So I, I like that there's a signal there. I hope they're ready for a lot of losing because uh, at the moment they're not adapting to the meta at all. Like They're, they're not playing compositions that really work to the, the current meta. Overall, I'm not seeing that much exploration from their players either. They're not experimenting enough for me. As we've said, we want Shook to be that catalyst. He needs to go back to something that, that worked for him in the past. I'd like to see something like the Zac. Uh, he played Lee Sin last week, but it really didn't work for him. And overall, psychologically, I don't think they're ready to change. My biggest concern is how uh, ignoring champion picks, uh, we have this really fast meta with a lot of focus on laning phase and like synergy with your jungler to try and get ahead. They don't have the players that that like play super aggressive in the early game. They don't have the players who win lane on their own. Uh, it was the same last split. They won through late game team fighting. They said that in a statement. The meta is not going to change that quickly that it's suddenly going to be all about late game again. So we have at least a couple of weeks where games will be decided around 25, 30 minutes, and that simply does not suit this team. So I think the only hope is that suddenly uh, the next patch makes it late game, but it shouldn't happen. This is the game where at least in the spring split, they had one win, they went one and seven. Mm -hmm. So if you think about mental barriers, this is also when you look at it mathematically, it's going to become really, really freaking hard to qualify if you go 0 and 8. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy because they almost made semifinals yep. last split. Like, it's a huge change for them. But because they also started so poorly last time, we feel like it's the same story. But this team here, if they don't beat Unicorns today, I think they're out. Yeah, they need to give a signal to their fans, to the community, to everyone that they can do it yep. and that they're willing to play. And then to do that, they have to beat the Unicorns of Love. The Unicorns of Love still playing without Samak, so Neon is into that lineup. Obviously, it won't be that easy for them to just adjust to the new player coming in. But they can count on a trio that has been performing. Yeah, I think Cold, Totoro, and Exile actually synergize really well. We saw Totoro roaming up a, a bunch in the last couple of weeks. Cold has always been a, a very strong jungler for the Unicorns as well. And if they can facilitate Exile in the early game, that's really how Unicorns are going to win the game. We saw them trying to play this final composition, didn't work for them, but I'm enjoying the experimentation. Yeah, it's fine. The thing about Unicorns is I like a lot of their players. They actually have good individual players that can make plays like the one we're seeing on screen. But as a team, they're trying to play less crazy and more controlled and yet they make some of these huge mistakes where like they invade level one with a funnel comp and give two kills to Memento. The one play you can't give kills to, and then you lose because of yourself. What's more frustrating, a team that does nothing for 40 minutes and loses, or a team that has the perfect game plan and invades and goes 0-2 versus the enemy jungler and just loses? Oh. I say doing nothing, because at least if you make the mistake, you know not to make the mistake in the future. Whereas if you just let the other team roll over you, <laughs> okay. you're That's not fine. trying to do anything. As a caster who wants to see Unicorns of Love succeed with these players, that's the most frustrating for yeah. me, because whenever I talk to other teams, they praise Unicorns. They're like, these guys are pretty good in scrims. These guys are hard to play against on stage. They're actually better than they look. And it was the same deal last split, even though they were last place. So I get frustrated when I'm like, yay, I like what you're doing. And then, no, why do you do this? You don't have to do this. And it's a call that backfires. We are getting closer to the game. So just final question, pivotal game for either side if they pick it up. Do you see? Either of these teams making the miracle run to playoffs. I can still see Unicorns Love make it into playoffs. They will beat H2K today. They are not far behind the top six teams nope. when it looks at how they're playing in the game, and they're good enough to do it. You said the same thing last split. It didn't work out. I'm going for neither it's of true. these teams making playoffs. Neither of these teams making Negative. playoffs, according to Medic. Well, at least one of them has to win, and one of them has to send <laughs> yeah. a signal that they are still willing to play the game. Time to kick it off uh, and head over to our casters for H2K versus the Unicorns of Love. Thank you very much, Shox. Good day, all you.